This episode of Capes and Lunatics is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. This is Luca Perk, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Cape and Lunatics episode 147. I am Phil. Joining me as always, <laughs> the Prince, the Popper, the Madman of New Jersey is Charlie the Professor Exer. <laughs> And the Sleeping Beauty of Florida, the Queen of the Armadillos herself, it is. Hey y'all, it's Lil Hellfire. It feels petty, but I deserve it, it's fine. <laughs> Don't make her right. you. Hey, I'm just defending my boy Charlie Usher, you were like, why isn't he here in... Why is he three minutes late? And I was like, well, why are you an hour and three minutes late? And you were like, oh no... <laughs> Anyway, so, oh, but um, did everyone see? Yes, it's episode 147. Did you see the big booking we might have? We Looks like we may have for episode 150. The Doom Ooh. Bot himself? Yes, we may have Master Doom himself for episode 150. Ooh, and his, Master his, Doom. If not, he can just send in a voicemail. And his raw He bo- can pull a ray. And his raw It'll bot. be fine. That'll be fine. Oh, okay. Um, when are we doing that? That's your, that's the... That'll be the Should last. we say what that that day what that day is? Now is that is it that coincides with when it airs or when we're recording it? It'll air two days before my birthday, so I'm just calling it my big birthday episode because I'm an egomaniac. But yes. okay, that's, that's fine. Our oh man, I'm I'm a giant egomaniac, so I fit right in here. So exactly, yay egos, the <laughs> living planets. All right, so hey. <laughs> they keep they keep releasing the Batman news on a daily and pictures and news on a weekly basis. I think they should really other... keep it to themselves because people are so ready to be critical of it already. I like it, Lilith. Oh, he liked the Batmobile. Yeah, well, I, I saw a picture of him in like his bat suit without the mask. I thought he looked nice. The little yellow bat symbol. Ooh. I like the yellow. It reminds me of the 80s. Oh, and actually Which is his what logo they're going is yellow, for. So. Mm-hmm. Kinder, gentler Batman. I kind of like that. I mean... Want a kinder, gentler Batman? I know it probably is not as... Re- kinder, gentler I know it's probably not as realistic, but I, I kind of want them to go back to more tights and not, like, full armor and, like, you know, like, rolling, rolling tank fortresses. Batmobile. I, li- I like the uh, 80s Batmobile. Well, yeah. Look. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, that's that's the thing. Is they're, they're, they're demilitarizing the Batman, and I like that. That's good. It, it makes nice more Batman. sense in an urban environment. You know, they do have sleeker stuff for, you know, urban combat and stuff like that, so it would make kind of sense. And, and, you know, to be fair, I don't think Batman should be blowing up Gotham half the time. Man uses too much explosives. It's like, well, it's not a gun. It's just a missile launcher. Yes, but then who gets? Like, that's. But then who gets? Who Bruce gets? Re- who gets paid to rebuild the city? Bruce Wayne's company. Company subsidiary only- shell corporations upon shell corporations, uh, uh, uh. and all that chaos to steal all the orphans for all that adrenalized blood. I'm uh, just saying, uh. it all works out for Bruce. I'm just saying, the man. Uh, Man, I think is the only employer in all of Gotham. It's a one company town. Um, well, no, yeah. there, there's other companies. Well, They're no. just all evil. Well, More evil than Wayne. And who else wants to have a company there? You're either getting terrorized by the Joker or the Rogues, or you know, getting visited by Batman. You know, because get out of town. You know, yeah, because he's with his buddy Bruce Wayne. He doesn't want you guys competing. Mm-hmm. Something like that. <laughs> But I like that. Any Uzis. But yeah, I like a smaller Batmobile. I mean, the 90s Batmobile from the comics would have been cool, but I mean, no, the 80s. 
The eighties is a vibe yeah, well, right now. Hashtag deal with it. Oh, synergy. Well, Wonder, you know, Wonder Woman eighty four. Mm. Mm, that's an interesting qu- question there. Well, you know, I do think that they're taking the right lessons from Shazam and Wonder Woman, and sort of getting you know getting away from you know getting away from like lightning bolts like lasers into the sky. And I, I don't think we'll get a laser into the sky in this. I think we'll get a nice, simple Batman story with some great detective work, some punch 'em ups. About time you got some detective work. And that's that's what the kids want these days, you know. You know, a a, a villain who is not a crazed sociopath with a political agenda or an apolitical agenda. Someone that I'm just sure. wants to steal stuff for money. That's what Batman needs. A villain who wants to steal stuff for money. Well, I, I And we do got we do got Catwoman in it, so Well I think I think we're gonna have multiple villains, so I wonder if it's gonna be a gang war or something. I don't think it's gonna be multiple villains. I think it's gonna be like a tease for the next you know what um, I mean, movie. It's like, oh, we introduced this guy. You know, definitely we're gonna introduce Harvey, see what that relationship's like. Well, you know. Well, did you Ooh. see? Did you see the other bit of news? They uh, announced that they uh, hired twin actors for the movie, Charlie and Max Carver. So they're like, "What are we doing with twins?" Yeah, they're from Teen Wolf, they're and like, also um the Leftovers. Yeah, so they're like, "All right, what are we doing? Are we doing Two Face goons? Are we doing Tweedledee and Tweedledum? Are we doing the Trigger Probably twins?" Probably Tweedledee and Tweedledum is where your money's gonna be. So make mad the Mad Hatter the villain. That's. Uh, I, mean, I mean, we haven't it's had a choice. I mean, hey, it's better than the Riddler. It's better than Joker. Hey, there's been things that have been done yeah. to death. Yeah, we haven't had. We haven't had. And plus, they want to capitalize on that Gotham fandom too. When you think about it, so. And plus, we haven't had Hatter in live action since what Batman sixty six. Yeah. There might be a reason for that. Plot twist! It's Puzzler! Because <laughs> they're not yellow. I'll be using no. the Riddler for some reason. <laughs> I mean, what I was actually thinking is, wouldn't it be really cool if the actual villain of it is Catwoman? Ooh. And it's really about a Batman-Catwoman dynamic and this sort of... Especially if you get a nice Bruce Selina story mixed you in You know you have Bat- to hit that button right, Batman. though. What button? This guy over here, wanting complex emotions with a woman. No, she's a black woman with a whip. Nah, she ain't getting her full story. Sorry, sorry, y'all can fight well, me, but I know, oh, I know my DC okay. and Warner Brothers. Okay, I know them. I'm a uh, little. I'm a sweet summer child, and I always hope for the best. Oh, that. Button, I'm that just button. saying, my sweet summer child. <laughs> I'm just saying. I think it would be really great if that is what they they decided to pursue. That, that is what they decided to look at. Is what if we did a story where Batman and Catwoman are antagonists, and it is? Didn't we already get that it, though? With Anne Hathaway, technically. Yeah, I just wonder. They technically. Might, I just wonder if they're going to start her out as the cat burglar or wonder whatever. But I wonder if they are going to go for the relationship. They're doing your one Catwoman. They have to be. Well, for what it's worth, if they since they did cast a woman of color, maybe they're going to go full Eartha Kitt on this. And, you know, remember that the Eartha Kitt, she had things for Batman's utility belt, but, you know, it wasn't, well, well. it was a no strings attached for her, you know. And so I don't think it's going to be, I think it is going to be, you know, a woman with a whip kind of storyline. And uh, maybe Brucey likes it, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, I think that if you want to explore that kind of story, and you look at the the Selena-Bruce relationship on Gotham, and how that did inform that story and, and really propel it, I think that's an important lesson that DC might have learned in saying, you know, let's really look at this and look and have ourselves, for what it's worth, give ourselves a Loki, who's going to be our antagonist in the first film, but then we can sort of do a nice face turn by the third film where she's really an anti-hero. I just, yeah, I just wonder if it's like they were going to go like uh, end up at least by the first or second movie, have them in a relationship because that's where they're at in the comics. But I don't know for now, but the twins, I, yeah, I don't know about the Tweedledee and Tweedledum. I'd rather see like the trigger twins, twin cowboys. <laughs> no, 
No. Steampunk Cowboys are out now, they're, son. They're some, We're about five years too late on that trend. There's some, I'm just saying. There's somebody's enforcers. I'm telling you. It's their mirror master. Um, no, listen, like, oh, penguin, listen, they are penguin. known for their abs. I don't know. I don't know how they can work in what the Carver twins are known for in this movie. Yeah, but aren't Tweedledee and Tweedledum usually know. like overweight? It's like, yeah, Trigger twins usually are. But like, see, it, it's 2020. Everybody's lost weight on the, on the keto diets and the whatnots. It's fine. Except for Thor. Um, Gotham Chemicals gave me abs. Yeah. Basically. I'm, I'm, yeah. Uh, who knows? Who knows? I mean, they, maybe they're, they're definitely skewing super gonna... young, though. Oh, they are actually, you know super what? Hot topic right now. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, Affleck would was be... what pushing fifty. <laughs> it looks you like sixty, what? but I, I can imagine myself. <laughs> yeah, I think I think they're going to be Catwoman's henchmen. Ooh. Um, you know, she could have two two dude henchmen and twins. You know, why not? There are Siamese, if you please. It would be. A, Lady and the Tramp would like to have a word with you. Don't get us sued by Disney, please. <laughs> <laughs> Your mom's no, overlord I, is a, it has an itchy suing finger. I'm just saying. They're like, leave Charlie alone. He promotes us every week. Yeah, no, they, they love me. Disney loves me. Um, no, but I, I could see Catwoman have, especially if they go for a real villainous Catwoman, having a couple of, you know, strapping young twin henchmen, you know. Mm-hmm. I could totally see I could totally see Eartha Kit having two strapping young twin henchmen around as she needs them, you know? We're all acting like Zoe Kravitz is old when she's younger than every single person on this damn podcast. <laughs> I'm not talking about Eartha Kit. Eartha Kit wasn't old when she did Batman in the 60s, man. Eartha Kitt was- I guess old for the sixties is different than old for the twenty twenty. Oh, I don't know. Oh, she's old. Okay, yeah, she's she was she was a contemporary of Adam West at the time. There we go. There we go. <laughs> yes, she was an age appropriate romance, but no, but she was Who she was, was you know a big model of sex appeal. You know. Yes, and we can agree. More. We can all agree on that. Sorry, Julie. And way more- Me too. Let's not forget no, 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 Julie no, Newmar. There was nothing wrong with any of those But you know women. what? What I will say is, when you had Eartha Kitt, she could be far more aggressive. <laughs> and far more, you know... Well, and that, that's a whole can of worms in and of itself that I don't want to get into. Yeah, I'm mean, shy like, kind I know, of avoid I'm, that. I'm so. just saying, well, and for what it's worth, that also fed into Eartha Kitt as a character of herself. She was... Yes. She was very much a you do, here kind of lady. You do what you do. You do what you must. You do what you must. Hey. I get it. Hey. Mm-hmm. Moving on. I, had, I had no problem with that. any of the three cat women. They were all perfect. Yes. Yes, they were all wonderful. But, um, yeah, but so it would be neat if that's the thing. And if we don't know who the other villain is, I, I think that maybe focusing on a Catwoman-centric story might be the way to go. And it's certainly something no, they've never done. That before. reads the way that I know him, though. It's just like I don't know. I just have too many, um, have too many issues with everybody involved in this movie, and I don't, I don't, I don't give them the yeah. benefit of the doubt like that. <laughs> That's okay. Lilith has the heart of a winter child. What? I do. Winter <laughs> is never coming because it's always here. It never leaves in my heart. It's always <laughs> cold and gray. It's fine. Suck it. She is Elsa. Uh, well, when did you get a heart? Any I don't want to murder little redheads. What? <laughs> no, well, that was my takeaway from Frozen. Oh, I, I, I was going by the. I was. I was thinking of the original Hans Christian Andersen one, where she didn't really want to murder anyone, but you know, she she liked people whose hearts had been turned to. Cold and, and, and cruelty. So. I need it bigger. It's a fun story. Anyways. So, what else so, you got uh, on the agenda? Just don't sit back. Okay. And okay. push your buttons. Hell, push your buttons. Anyway. Uh, <clears throat> Alright, and I know everyone's sick of me bringing this up, but oh my god. Picard episode 7 this week. 
And to quote my Facebook quote, is CBS paying you? Because if not, they should be. No, but if they would like to offer me their dirty, dirty money, I will take it. No, I mean, come on. He's st- last In the last episode, he stepped through the magic board portal that like basically teleported him a couple, you know, however far away. He, he uh, goes to the planet where Troy and Riker are uh, living now with their daughter. Their daughter, oh, Kat, their daughter. Is, is she anything like her grandma? Because I figure the the child of those two would very much be like her, her grandma. I'm just saying. No, she's she's. Did, she's, did they name the child Majel? No, they named her Kestra. Do you remember what significance that name oh, has? Kestra. Kestra, yes. Why does that seem sound familiar? Because that was her. That was Troy's older sister who died when Troy was a baby. Remember? Uh Okay. They had a son who died, I, and then, then they had a, oh, the son before that who died. I guess he had some what they say it was some kind of silicone-based disease, but it was like they're like, oh well, you know, something about a neural net could have like helped him, like cured him. But it's like since you know everyone gave up on, uh, you know, researching the artificial life forms and artificial life for- forms themselves, you know, and they had no cure. So. Mm. Uh. Can't it all comes full circle. But I mean, a lot. Most of this episode is just Picard hanging out with them and basically talking to them, like, "Oh, I'm in over my head," you know, with Data's daughter and the whole thing. And everyone's like, "Oh, look, my Pic- space pirates." But P- 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 yeah, Picard's vulnerable. He would never admit, uh, you know, doubts or whatever on the original series. Well, they're not on a ship anymore. You I know, know, he doesn't have to be God, and he number one doesn't have to be number one. <laughs> like they can, they can do that now. They have, they had that relationship towards kind of the end of the series, though. To be oh fair. my lord, they're living old school too, though. But because uh, uh, Riker was making pizza in a uh, pizza oven outside. Oh, yeah, well, he always liked to cook. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. but no, so he doesn't like the taste of replicated food. He but wants to know what Everything an tastes like chicken. It's fine. Hey, well. But no, very good episode. Uh, I think the best one so far. <laughs> Again, Lilith, episode seven. No, seven of nine. But guess who, show, guess, who, guess who comes back next episode for episode eight? Seven of nine. Damn it! Get it together, CBS! They're Get it, it together! They're doing it just a mess with you, Lilith, so far. Or oh, I could steal the Matt Kona. He's a fan favorite, Lilith. I'll steal the Matt Kona joke. He goes, you know what they originally wanted to call 7 or 9? 8.53. Seven minutes until it. 9, Charlie Esser. Oh, okay. Seven <laughs> <laughs> so mad it's not funny because you had to explain the joke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know it took me uh, the first time. I'm not a it, clever man. It took me, well, it took me a second to get it too. It's got to be longer. I need a full length one. Yeah. I bet you do, buddy. Oh, <laughs> anywho, both saying that. Uh, but yeah, only three. Oh, so, see, Lilith, did you tell me to tell you when the up when the uh, season's over? Yeah, there's only three more. Yeah, so I can binge it all. Yeah, so I'm like, sorry, CBS All Access. I don't know that I trust you with all my money just yet. So I don't know. So in three weeks, it'll be the fin- uh, season one finale. So, okie dokie. So, so um, there was some Disney CBS news. I believe you boys no. wanted to talk, or are you going to save that for Super Connectivity? What your your Disney news that you guys were talking about the TV shows or whatever. Oh, I was going to say that for Super Connectivity, but I mean... Okie dokie, no, I well, just... Which one? Yeah, we know we're actually, stay tuned, I mean, stay yeah. tuned for Super Connectivity. I've got a, I've got a list for Super... Yeah. I have a, a list for Super Connectivity anymore. Oh, anymore. I've been sending them stuff all week, it, you know. It just, it just magically appears, yes. Oh, but, uh, no, but, you know what, uh... I did see, uh... Did, well, did you see that they moved the... Because of coronavirus, they moved the James Bond, uh... Movie from April 10th to November 12th. And then, but but yeah. then, but then, meanwhile, Disney's like, we're not moving Black Widow. No, well, they're not. And they, that'll they be got, something they, for them to blame if it doesn't do well. I get it. Well, no, I think it's like a yeah, chain well, reaction. It's, it's like a chain reaction. It's like you know, if we move back Black Widow, then that affects Eternals, and that affects this. Exactly. And that, you know, we yeah. and they, I'm sure they probably want Black it's, Widow to come before Cap and Winter Sol Falcon and Winter Soldier. Blah blah. blah. Exactly. They've they got a plan, and you know, not for nothing. And real estate is real estate. And, and it's May. Black Widow's May. Good, less competition. It's like two more months till Black Widow. Exactly. They'll, they'll, the week will be dead by then. Well, either I'll be dead 
or this whole coronavirus will be done by then. The herd will be thinned well, out by I'll then. Well, all have it and be dead, or... The strong will see Black Widow, and the weak will die. Yes. What a way to go. <laughs> what, Scarlett Johansson? Well, you know. Hell. Yeah, um, you know, I mean, it is what it is. It's it's the coronavirus. It's out there. It's already made landfall. Mm-hmm. It's going to start creeping across, and, you know, just wash your dang hands. And don't touch your face. Yeah. If you wash your hands, I just love, I don't know. It's, I just love the point everyone else is, keeps bringing up. It's like, you know, all these, like, hand-washing the thing, signs are everywhere now, and it's like, you know, Purell sa- and stuff is selling out now, and it's just like, and, you know, they, all the hand sanitizer, and people are like, why weren't you thirty people washing your hands before this? Well, first of all, everybody hoards stuff like I do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, you don't need that much hand sanitizer. It's just, you know. Yeah, I know. Wait, wait, you hoard. Little goes a long way. When people overdo things, they panic and they overdo things, and it is what they're selfish a holes is what it is because you don't really need all that. That too. Suck it. That too. So you, so what you? Uh, yeah, but no, I, I think that first of all, I think it was a. I think it was a mistake to move James Bond. I think they probably moved James Bond probably... For other reasons, honestly. honestly. Who even yeah. cares about James Bond there anymore? No Nobody. They need, yeah, they really. Need, they, they, they need to retool the premise. I think instead of, like, one guy, they need to make it the concept, like... The, yeah, the code name. It's, yeah, it's like a, it's like an well, organization. Well, more with the other double O's. Well, yeah, well, or, yeah. I mean, they have a double O universe that they can explore. Or make I it, think this one is supposed to be doing that, where they have 006 in it. You yeah, know? And, ma- and you can even make 007 James Bond like a code name, so it's like you can have anyone in there. No, that's stupid. Nobody likes that idea. Uh, actually, it's got a lot of traction in the fandom, but... Yeah, I know, I know. Only oh, old people suck. don't like it. Suck an Xer. <laughs> think about this. You could have like a retire For the ones who live, you could have like a retirement home, so if you go to the retirement home, you see oh, Sean Connery, and you is- see... Uh, that means that he has two code names. So he has the code name 007 and the code name James Bond. That makes no sense. Super secret like, spy organization, Charlie Esser. Suck it. His code name I don't know. As somebody who actually prefers the books to the movies, I don't like that idea personally. But hey, I mean, if yeah. the fandom wants to give it to him, because, you know, those last two Bond movies did not do well. So you got to do something. You got to do something for the fans. Well, like I said, I think I think the thing you do is you just start expanding your universe and you start building out I mean, I think you, what the double O organization really is and what it does. Dan, and, Jan, Dan you know. Judy Ditch is dead in that universe, so that universe is technically what? dead to me. What? Yeah, I, they wanted to go back to like this kind of back to basic thing. They wanted Bond to have like yeah, it's a whole thing, and I I didn't agree with. So it's just like whatever, dude. Whatever. You go ahead I and have your really stuff. You really want to do it. what you do is you make you make you make Bond the new M. Ooh, yeah, I would like that a lot. You know, and have him running the whole Nick Fury uh, gambit with the double O's. You know, there you go. Yeah, the like fact, don't you try it because I did it and I did it better. There you go. You know, there yeah. you go. There you go, Daniel Craig. You don't have to stay in so, in so much shape because every movie's like oh, I don't know if I want to come back. And then they back the money truck up. Well, quiet as this cap, nobody was really clamoring for him to come back. Oh. The first two yeah. times, but yeah, I like that. Make him the new, you know, quote unquote Nick Fury, and then bring in, yeah, bring in younger guys, bring in women, bring it, bring it all in. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Well, the entire double, you theoretically have at least nine different double O's that you could have nine secret agents for the double O team. Double O's one through nine, oh, and probably double O O, triple O. You know. <laughs> That's, you know, unless they retire his number. And then you gotta have, you know, double O hashtag, you know, because we ran out of numbers now, so. The young age in double O. Double o. Listen, I, I'm just saying, maybe maybe we don't need the, maybe we don't need the Bond franchise since we have the Kingsman franchise. I'm just saying, maybe, maybe, maybe let's just let do Bond fade out for 20 years. Yeah, we really do. Kingsman? Is thing? It, it's a thing. thing. It's a thing. Are they it make, makes money. Are they making Everybody more? Everybody loves Taron Egerton. They only made two. So, are they making more? Yeah, they're making more. Of course, he's making more. Come on. Yeah, aren't they even like doing like a prequel yeah, now called The summertime. King's Man or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. So there's like a, a, a first one. You get I, I, I kind of dig that too. universe. It's like you don't have to think about it. It's it's fun. Punch them up, and you know, hot people doing hot things. You know, and sometimes it's why you need. 
It's fine having a sausage fest. It's by Harry Potter. Harry Potter. With attractive people. Hey, don't at me! Well, <laughs> they're spies that they have to be attractive. Nobody cares if you're attractive if you're a wizard. Um, okay. <laughs> Name really hot wizards. Oh, ooh, ooh okay. everybody that was on <laughs> Waverly Place on Disney. Yeah. Yeah, okay. there we go. Okay. Selena Gomez, baby! Selena Gomez! No oh my. There you go, yes. The Wizards of Waze- Waverly Place are hot. There we go. So there you go. Disney makes wizards hot. Except for their Sorcerer Supreme. <laughs> Fight me, get uh, Cumber Patches! <laughs> I don't care! It's Friday night. I do not effing care. <laughs> Suck it. Yeah. Moving right along, Philip. Yeah. What else is on the agenda? Uh, <laughs> I, I get I get uh, banned from Twitter. Okay, oh, okay. I'll throw this out because Charlie won't know who these are. But uh, Lils, did you see uh, they promoted uh, Brandon McKnight and Kayla Compton, uh, aka Chester and Allegra, on Flash this season regulars for season seven? Bro, we've had this, co- dear Flash CW. We have had Does- this damn conversation with Ralph. With freak, I'm over. Well, I was gonna say. I'm over I was gonna say. Does this mean Carlos is is leave is definitely leaving? Is Cisco <sighs> leaving? Look, I don't care. Look, Carlos Valdez, I love you, babe, <laughs> but you had your chance. You keep playing these games for money, and I'm over it. I'm over well, it. Maybe, go back to Broadway. Maybe they're go over. Go find it. Stein and go sing a damn song. Well, maybe they're o- maybe they're over it because did you see the last Flash? I mean, basically, I mean Chester's already taken over for Cisco. It's been, you know. They're basically like, okay, you want to yeah. leave? You want to leave? Go ahead, bye. They, I, honestly, I thought they only brought them back for like crisis for like fan service or whatever, and it turns out I was right. <laughs> they need him for crisis. Yeah, I don't like either of those. I don't like Ralph. Like, we need to be downsizing in the further seasons, not upping the cast. Yeah, like, I, I need the story yeah. to be back about Barry. I, I don't even care about Iris anymore. Like, I need Barry. We oh, need I, to fix him. I know. Before this. This this last episode, you know, after Crisis, I was like, where the hell is Barry at? Do we barely get him anymore? Yeah, yeah. It's called The Flash. I'm sorry. It, like, it, excuse me for wanting some Flash. And, uh, and if you're sick of this mirror story, get Iris out of the damn mirror already. And leave her there and cover up the mirror for all I care at this point. <gasps> and I love people are just I'm like, sorry, Candace. I love you. But, you know, like, if I was your agent, I would have you on your own show on the CW. You know what I'm saying? You could just hit me on Twitter and we could talk about it. Whatever. I think it's time to move on from The Flash. Where do we start? Mirror Master. <laughs> okay. So, what is inside the mirror? It's like a whole, like, mirror. Re- it's like a whole nother. It looks like this, the whole this whole reality. But it's mirrored! Get it? It's all Get yeah, it. But like, so, like, when she goes outside in the mirror universe, it's, like, full of people? No, it's, like, that's the thing, it's, like, empty except for this woman who's trapped in there with her, which, that's gonna, they're doing female mirror master, right? Of course. Because mm. every villain has to be a female now because we live in a clan fest universe. You know what? I don't care. Y'all can be mad at me. I don't care. Hashtag feminism. Yeah, basically, that's what the arrow verse boils down to. And like I said, it goes so past feminism that it's post-feminism right back to misogynistic BS. So I just, I can't. It's I fine can't. I can't with the arrow verse. It's fine. They like their women with whips. Oh. No, they like their women to be whipping boys is the problem. Hey-o. Um, <laughs> Scream it! Ugh. Oh, Just, and, mm. and speaking of Arrowverse news, did everyone see Melissa Benoist is pregnant? Oh, muzzle! Super yes, girl is pregnant. Is. Oh my god, with Chris Wood's Her baby, first like canine baby. <sighs> I, yes. That baby's gonna be so attractive; it's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord! Oh, well, and, I hope so. And uh, I think all babies look like potatoes, really. So, <laughs> and look, and look, well, they do. I know, and Lil, you you know it's gonna happen, right? Instead of one of their parents, is gonna be Kevin Smith in the delivery room, right? <laughs> Crying on his podcast on live Instagram. Blog. On Instagram. <laughs> oh my 
like, oh, this you is get an my... Insta story about it. <laughs> this is that was beautiful He's baby. Not the earth. That's great. Kevin Smith's gonna do a whole episode on his podcast. Just be like, I was right there. I caught the baby as it came out. <laughs> I cut the cord. <laughs> now Chris Woods is mad, of course, but you know, I'm Kevin Smith. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> that's a little too personal. <laughs> Kevin Smith's Episiotomies are a thing, people. <laughs> Just saying. You know Kevin Smith's gonna be right there. I'm happy for her though. She deserves it. She's like Sunshine personified. I'm I'm happy for her though. I just wish they treated her better on her own show. Because how many how many episodes did they cut? Because they said they cut the episode short because she's well, it was 22. It's supposed to be 22, yeah. and they cut it to 20. Oh, did they? Okay, so, so that's like, about like six weeks of filming, I guess. So or whatever. Like, they only cut two they episodes. Cut. Okay. I mean, they were, it was getting fewer and fewer anyway. Like it was supposed to be 23, and then didn't like one season have like 20 already, or was it 21? Was that the first season though that they only had like 20 or something? No, it was like the it was like the second season when they moved to CW or something. Ew, I don't know, maybe because I thought every yeah, I thought they've all had like twenty two since then. And can I just since we're talking about the CW, like what the hell happened to Nancy Drew? So I finally all caught up on Nancy Drew. It was a trudge, and like I love Nancy Drew the books, but like why does Nancy Drew have a supernatural twist? What? I haven't seen it, but I would assume it's because they're doing all, aren't they? Because Riverdale? Yeah, that's what like, I'm everybody thinking. Everybody thinks Nancy Drew's a Riverdale spinoff, and I'm like, look here, mother effers. I mean, <laughs> Riverdale wishes you mean, had the balls of the Nancy Drew universe. The, sh- mm-hmm. the show. The, the, yeah, the, the show. show. On the CW. TV show. Oh, on the CW. Oh, they have an Nancy Drew yeah, show? It's got a supernatural now. twist. It's, it's it, like, I like I can see my Nancy, especially because she's a redhead. Hail. Um... <laughs> <laughs> but like I can see like little bits of her, but like like that supernatural thing has just clouded the whole first season for me. It's very divisive. I, I hope they just get rid of it in season two. Like I said, I have watched neither, but I would assume they're going the supernatural route because they're like, oh hey, it works for Riverdale, and people and the kids seem to like that. But so. it's not technically Riverdale isn't supernatural though. Technically, like they're still trying to skirt that line that it's just all the drugs in the in the water, like literally. <laughs> Like literally in the maple syrup, like literally that's the answer. Like I said, so, it's, <laughs> so when you say it's supernatural, do you mean like it's spooky? like I'm talking ghosts, like, hauntings, like actually like, um, not like not like you know like seances, Charlie? Is it like Scooby Doo? Well, yeah, Is it like Scooby Doo, but they're actually monsters? <laughs> well, yes. Well, no. no seriously, saying, are you sure they're not just leading up with all of that to? It was old man McGillicuddy the whole time. No, no, they're dead serious about this supernatural presence. Like, the whole town is super superstitious because it's a maritime town. The whole deal, like, they went all in on this supernatural thing, so. Yeah. It's, well, it's very perplexing. Know. Yeah. Um, I, I like a mystery that I can solve, and I just feel like when you do ghosts, anything goes, and, you know, whatever the whatever the showrunner wants to do and have, you know, to subvert expectations. But I, that's I just, weird. Because I, I dealt with eight, eight seasons of Pretty Little Liars with that crap. I, I just, I can't do it anymore. Yeah, I don't get the whole Bye ghost either. thing. Because, you know, that's... There are other ghost hunting mystery people. That's exactly. not really and then, why do. do that to Nancy Drew? Why? Exactly. And then I go, oh, it's the same people... Who took great Gossip Girl books and totally, totally screwed my favorite character, Nate, and they didn't make Serena and Blair end up together. So I'm just like, oh, it just explains everything. Stop adapting books if you don't read them. That That's my point. Screw it. <laughs> <laughs> just please. Okay, and that was my CW rant. I'm sorry. We're off track. Comic books? Anything no else, Philip? <laughs> no, yeah, we could go to comic books. Uh, yes, let's go to comics. Phil's Comics Corner. Charlie Esther, I have a question for you. Why did you ask me if I read Batman 90? Oh, I was just reading a spoiler for it about, like, oh, uh, there was this other supervillain who had a detective, and he got the Riddler and the Penguin and Catwoman and the Joker together, and that's when when Joker went from just being a clown-themed villain to being crazy. Um, You mean... You mean the the designer? Yeah. Okay. 
Oh. I, mean, I mean, I'm liking the story, but what the whole thing is, it's like, Lil, if you read it, right? Yeah. But it's, um, it, like, back in the I don't early, know why I torture back myself. Back in the early days, like, back when, like, Dick Grayson was Robin, like, this, this the designer guy shows up in Gotham. Yeah, and he gets Joker, Penguin, Catwoman, and Riddler and says, you know, I'll help you with your plans. I'll help you up your games and stuff. So he talks, you know, to Catwoman and Penguin and Riddler and, you know, they're basically like, oh, yeah, 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 because, like, I guess Catwoman had a plot to, like, steal all of Bruce Wayne's stuff and, you know, and all, you know, they all have these big plans. Can, can, it's Ra's al Ghul, isn't it? What? The designer is Ra's al Ghul, right? I don't know. They haven't revealed who it is, but no, I, but, uh. Yeah, that's, it's Ra's al Ghul. Because they make it look like, because they make it look like in this issue, in the end of the flashback, it looks like they kill him, but now he's, like, back all of a sudden. Of course not. After years, he's back, so, yeah. yeah. But, he's Ra's al Ghul. But yeah, he was he was, <laughs> he was gonna help the Gotham. Rose. He's one of those are. Get it right. He was gonna. Oh, don't you dare! He was gonna. He was gonna talk to. The, he, he was gonna help all the villains off their game. But then he talked to the Joker and realized he's like, oh, oh my God! He saw like how dark the Joker was. He was just like, kill them all. <laughs> he's like, I'm not bringing all this evil into the world. The Joker spooked him somehow. Oh, so. He so got the, the Joker one. That, that one glimpse of like no, sanity. Design, no, once the once the they don't show what he said, but what the designer sat down with the rest of them, he was fine. The minute he sits down with the Joker in private and hears all his inner thoughts, he was like, "Kill them all." He's like, he's like, he's like, I'm not gonna be un- responsible for unleashing this on them on Gotham or ah, the Joker okay. spooked them somehow. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. so really, okay. I mean. Yeah, that's fine. That's the Joker for you. Uh, <laughs> oh, but oh, but kids, get your copies of Batman ninety one next issue because I guess what punchline showing up again? Yeah, I wonder if that. I wonder if eighty nine still yeah. sell, last. I wonder if that's still selling high, even though he was, she was in two whole panels. No. Um, I I do want to shout out Hill House Comics because Daphne uh Burn number three is out. Uh. Laura Marks and Kelly Jones collaboration, so just gonna shout that out. Oh, Kelly Jones! Yeah, doing the artwork. It's it's a really great dark gothic s vibe on the artwork. It's what kind of keeps pulling me back. And Daphne still needs to kind of be like a little more filled out, but I definitely love like the case that she's working on. So what's the name? It's, with, it's for her mother who she hates, so we can all relate sometimes, right? Yeah. yeah. What's the What's the name of it again? <laughs> Uh, Daphne Byrne, number three. Okay, cool. Oh, um, Lilith, did you read Superman Villains? I had to. Everybody that I, like, read reviews for, they hated it. So I was just like, I didn't think it was that bad, though. I was like, come on, how are you going to hate on Lex Luthor, Mongol, and Toy Man? Like, what? Get a grip. Yeah, I mean. It's fine. It's I- character-driven. I don't think people are used to character-driven stories anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of like... Yeah, no, I didn't. You know, that threw everybody off a bit. I didn't have a problem with it. I mean, I I didn't think there was that much of a. I mean, there was a few villains they focused on a little bit, but I mean, I guess Mongol is like just a long line of. It's like George Foreman. They all named themselves Mongol, so the son keeps. Yes. Every generation, the son kills the father, and it's like, hi, Mongol, take Mongol's place. (laughs) What? I feel like we already knew that, but. I know. Well, I think they did it once. They showed one son and father, but now, yeah, I guess it's a line stretching back to the beginning of time. It's just like, like I said, like George Foreman, they all named themselves Mongol. Well, you know, like I said, I, I, Matt Fraction needs a lot more work. So does Jody Hauser in DC. Like, we got to kind of like, you know what I mean? Like, Greg Rocco, yeah. like, oh, it's so old and overdone. Like, ah, shake up, shake it up, shake it up, which I think is why I like this book, because it's like, showcasing some of the new talent that we could be getting more of yeah. hopefully if you buy the book and I mean, voice your opinion i liked it there's a bunch of stuff i mean we saw we saw on doomsday clock you know it happened but i mean mom and paul kent are back in continuity yeah Again. i i don't know how i feel about that like i'm still like very very perplexed about it well, it's like it's like quit- like does he really need my pocket at this point? I really feel like he doesn't. I have no problem with them, but quit going back and forth. Either keep him alive or kill him and keep him dead. One or the other, you know. Yeah. Oh, but I yeah, I love it's like I, I don't know why, but why he would do this. But I love the part where Firefly just like buzzes the Daily Planet building, and he just sees Clark Kent standing in front of the window, and he takes off. <laughs> Didn't want to get hit with that heat ray vision, you know. And uh, 
I love Clark just like trying to apologize to the planet employees and the one girl's like she's like okay everyone does everyone feel safer knowing you're working right next to Superman (laughs) (laughs) oh my lord but my favorite I think my favorite two pages I know it's a stupid joke but the Lex store the Lex two pages like he gets he gets the office Charlie and he's like checking his messages and it's like he has 98 messages so he keeps he starts playing his voicemails it's like first message (laughs) second he's like delete second message (laughs) he's like delete third message (laughs) it just starts flipping out because i guess all 98 messages of the joker laughing at lex you know because he didn't figure he didn't figure out clark kent was super Oh, you know, you know, Mister Mister Lex. You know, he's always five steps thinking, five steps ahead. Of everybody, the Joker's just calling, <laughs> laughing at him, like you idiot. Uh, How did you? I'm not surprised. Say- that, <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised he didn't just, you know, you know, take a page out of Joker's book. It's like, oh, I knew all along. I just, it just, I don't want to beat Clark Kent. I want to beat Superman. You know, I don't know, something like that. It's a you joke. Know. You wouldn't get it. Well, it's a joke. You wouldn't get it. Oh, is it the Batman thing? Because it's like they've, they're showing like the Joker seems to know who all the Robins and Batgirl are. So yeah. are are we to well, assume? You would think he killed one. I mean, oh well, wait, that's not this time. Well, no, you didn't. You didn't see that one page was it in eighty nine or eighty eight? Uh, he had a wall, and he had he had everyone's picture. He's like you know Dick Grayson, Jason Todd, Tim Drake, Barbara Gordon. He had everyone th- except for Bruce. Yeah. So are. I mean, they're not going to pull something stupid where he knows every Robin, but he doesn't know who Batman is, is it, are we? Wait to see it in the three Jokers! Get it? Coming in 2025. No, it's supposed to be out, like, what, this year? I don't July know. Or something like I don't that? know if they announced the official release date. Lilith, don't rush it. Matilda oh, before. wait. Lilith. Did I just? <laughs> Never mind. You did not hear that, then. Oh. I, I feel like I read that somewhere. I don't. It might have been we got this covered though, so don't quote me. In your super, I don't remember seeing it anywhere. Oh, did Lilith just drop top secret information? No top secret. No, I swear it might have been we got this covered. Like I promise. Sure, Lilith. Hey everybody. Hey everybody. Hey everybody. everybody. We might be getting three jokers this year. Just out of curiosity. Just out of curiosity. I keep on seeing this clip for like uh, Joker got Batman tied up and his mask is off and it's Bruce Wayne. What is this from? Oh, that's from the Harley Quinn Harley, show, isn't it? Harley Quinn, The electric yeah. car one? Harley Quinn, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's like, I saw a whole longer clip of it. Where's where like, my oh. damn car, Bruce? <laughs> we, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah cause, yeah, she, uh, Joe, uh, Batman was helping Harley cause Joker, like, kidnapped her whole crew and he's got the, you know, basically threatening Gotham and yeah, he has he has Batman tied up, and I forget was it Scarecrow or something on Mass him, and Joker's like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> He's like, "That's all we do." <laughs> it's, well, no, there's, there was a clip that I was seeing where he's like, "Ah, I just found out that my arch nemesis is just a rich ki- uh, a, a, a rich guy who likes to dress up like a bat and with daddy you know, issues." Yeah, know. yeah, yeah. That was that was Harley Quinn. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's what that's from. I've been wondering what that's from. No. Uh, yeah. It's, you should have told me it's just fan art. Don't worry about it. <laughs> a couple more well, That's where I thought at first. I thought there was some storyline where, like, oh, Bruce Wayne pretended to be Batman, you know, so Batman could show up later and distract the Joker. A couple more, couple more hentai he tentacles does. in it, and we could have said, oh, Lilith made that. Yeah, so <laughs> exactly. Okay, so I was just curious about that. Um, but but wait a wait, wait a minute, Lilith, can you give us a scoop? Come on, come on, make us big. No, on the no, seriously, I promise you, I, I read that somewhere, and I, it was probably good. Never gonna do like, the like, honestly, no. It's just, just okay. meant to. It, it is coming. Like I, I can, that much I can tell you. It has actually been written. We just don't know when it's gonna be published. Uh, and, I, I, and to be fair, I only know that one issue has been written. Weird. like for sure. So we're recording this March sixth. We're recording this March 6th, 2020. So remember where you heard that first. Three Jokers is coming this year. You know, it's only been four years. Don't rush the people. Well, anyway. it's been through some hands, as you do. Just like Lilith. Hey, oh. 
They wish. Um, <laughs> did you read Strange Adventures from our uh, friend Tom King oh, and yes. uh, art by Mitch Gerard? Yes, I did. Yeah, yes. I, I love that cover. That's what really drew me in. And then the story was like adorable. No, not that one. The Stranger Danger cover. Oh, yeah, no. I got this one. So what did you think? I mean, I, I wanted to see if it was going to be like the Mr. Miracle. Uh, yeah! It, it, it's like a low-key Mr. Miracle vibe, but not really. Mm-hmm. But it got like it's like super like complex and deep and like already in its issue one like he's not like really holding the punches with what he wants to do. So I appreciate that. Any I'm not on the fence about issue number two. I'm I'm in. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, yeah, I'm here for it. Uh, yeah, I know. Then he gets like framed for like that murder, and then he like hands his ray gun to Batman. Yeah, but is he framed? Because I feel like the story is like he's lying to himself about something, but what? Well, do you think he has some side? So Why do you do think it. he had a psychotic break or something? Because he hands Batman his gun and says, "Here, you know, you know." Exactly. So he's lying to himself about something. What is it? Did he really do it? Or he's been to space. Could it be taken over by some space alien or something? Oh, I hope it's not that. I-, I trust Tom King more than that. That's all I will say. <laughs> but then he wanted an impartial person who, you know, Batman kind of knows him, so he what calls in Mister Terrific. Ha ha, get it? That's terrific. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I liked it. Uh, yeah, like I, yeah, like I said, I'm still here for it. This, oh yeah, I was going to say, this is another 12, right? Yep. Yeah, so this is all, like also, it, this seems to be going in the way of like a self-contained story. I don't know how people feel about self-contained stories in 2020, but I'm actually like really here for it. I, I say just wall everybody off in their own universe for a little bit. I, I'm tired of giant events and colossal crossovers. Yeah. Just let something be self-contained. Well, I mean, the Mr. Miracle thing was self-contained and people like that. At least I did. I did. Of course, <laughs> we both did. Um, what what Marvel stuff can we talk that is not on your super connectivity agenda? Well, nothing. Comic books are never really on my agenda. We just get to them when we get to them. So uh, uh, we well, got Doctor Doom, Black Cat, Ms. Spider-Man. Marvel, well, Spider-Man. you know, we we do a little show called Ultimate Spider Cast. So I was thinking Spider Man Noir number one. <laughs> oh, that was fun. Um, oh, everyone read Spider Man Noir. See how I snuck that shameless plug right in there, Philip? Right in there? Yeah, stick it right in there. So what, you want to talk... This is a ways well, Philip. <laughs> so you want to talk about uh, Spider-Man Noir? We can talk Spider-Man Noir. Okay. Um, so this is after he gets back from the last Spider-Geddon-averse yeah, cross guess line. Where he was supposedly dead, and they're like, oh, hey, you're better now. <laughs> I got better. Um... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, say it's not better, say. Yeah, so that's nice. Um, so he does have spider powers in this and web shooters. Does everyone know he's Spider Man? It seemed that way. I don't know, but it, it's. I mean, I know. All, I, I mean, obviously, Aunt May and MJ know it, and I, I, it seems like Jameson maybe knows it too. Yeah, and... but they were just playing with current and con- continuity since you know current 616 I mean, Jonah knows who he is you know, he puts on the mask but then that's like the only thing that changes from his regular outfit uh. <laughs> it's noir, it's pocket. pulpy, it's moody it's fun hey I liked it though but um and uh of course we got a little Hellstrom re- reference here that was nice and um and the two sisters uh the Byzantine the Byzantinists um <laughs> Gotta love Byzantinists. Uh, and what's weird is I get the feeling, and maybe I'm just out on a limb here, that, that like she's totally a Nazi but is cool with it. Like that's gonna be the thing. It's like they're going <laughs> going back to Berlin. It's like, no, it's just the Nazis. We're all nice and lovely. It's like, no man, Nazis aren't cool. It's like, oh, you're just a, you're just an American. You don't understand how cool Nazis are, and that's like that's going to be their comp <laughs> after they, they, you know. It's going to be like Indiana, Indiana Parker and the. Yes, it's a very Indiana Jones as globe trotting exactly. through this Norwalk 
horror world, murder mystery, you know, Maltese Falcon kind of thing. And I'm kind of here for it. I really love the dialogue. I'm in love with the artwork. Like, oh my God, this artwork blew me away. I love it so much. It is is really nice. Really nice. And I really like, I I like the Jameson character. I like Peter and and Jameson kind of being contemporaries too. Um, yeah, that was pretty cool. He actually was checking the crime scene and everything. Why did it have to be the Black Cat Nightclub? Poor Black Cat Nightclub. Well, at least it was, it was just like a nightclub. It's not like Black Cat got killed or anything. I know, I'm just saying. But you do know. You, Lil, did you hear, is this like, is this a miniseries or is it an ongoing? Or It's five issues. Okay. Yeah, it's five issues. That's yeah, five. so, so yeah, so the Kingpin busted up Felicia Hardy's club. And I guess busted up Felicia too, is that the implication in that? Well that, well, that well, that waitress or whatever got killed, but I don't think they didn't say anything about anyone else getting. Uh, I thought I thought they, they said that she was in the hospital or something. They said something about her being broken up too or something. I don't know. So I thought I, I thought I got that that you know Felicia had run afoul. Unless I missed that. See, but this that, this is the weird thing did. about Margaret Stoll's though. Hmm. Like I love her novels and the video game stuff that she's worked on, but I haven't really been like a fan of her comic book stuff. But like I'm like here for this like it's so weird like i love her novels but the comic book stuff that they had her doing it feels like you know she's kind of doing it for a paycheck <laughs> and this feels like she's doing it for like the love of the character and wanting to flesh out a world do you know what i mean well the margaret Stoll stuff mm. i've read in comics i think was what was it captain marvel which isn't exactly your favorite anyway so exactly <laughs> that could be it too <laughs> that could be it <laughs> but no you know i know what she wrote charlie that that black widow novel you got Mm-hmm. That's Margaret. Stoll, oh, that was her. Yeah, yeah. Oh, great. Yeah, I got to read that novel one of these days. <sighs> yeah, there's two of them. Yeah, they were, they were good. Got to get, got to get that quarantine for the coronavirus, so I can just sit around and read all day. <laughs> Three weeks. <laughs> That's what they're saying now, man. Um, uh, coronavirus. Did anybody pick up Marvel number one? Marvel. No, I was debating it. I saw that, but I already had my five books for the week, and it, it's kind of like Alex Ross. So it's a must for me. Like that's like a name I see. I don't care what yeah. it is. Yeah, I'll just put it in my cart. Give it to me. It's fine. <laughs> I mean, it looked really cool. It was like you know early Avengers and the Hulk. So that was cool. What happens in it, Lilith? Yeah. Do tell. But because you don't really, you don't really see. I'm just kind of here for the art. Like I'm, I just thumb through the art, but like it, it's kind of cool to see his take on like the golden age of workers, you know what I mean? Like, I, like you know, we've seen the DC stuff, so it's, it's cool to see that perspective from him. So, yeah, I just I just flipped through it for the pictures, like, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, well, there you go. Well, hey, that's half. Kind of like an insta, but a book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Lilith, you probably didn't pick up Flash 750, did you? No, no. Not, what, not, did, okay, like, what happened? How much was it? Was it a normal size issue? What's going on? Well, no, it's seven ninety nine. but you got a couple stories in here. You got, I mean, first you got the current... Seven ninety nine for a for a post-New 52 Flash story? I don't care how many wait, stories are in it. Wait, Not going to pick wait, it up. Wait, wait, wait. The first story was current Barry and, like, uh, you know, some of the stuff that's going on, including the new villain, uh... So what's his face? Paradox. But then, no, 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 Lil. We got a couple stories, because the second story... Was a uh, it was set that you know back during like the Wally West. Wait a minute, hold on. What paradox? They need to have paradox on the TV show because he just blew up everything. So I'm just saying, season I know. next season better be paradox. But no, second the second story the second story was set through. It was a uh, it was Jeff Johns and Scott Collins. You know, like set during their run okay. on Wally. Uh, and then, then we get. Uh, was there any Jay Garrick? That's all I need to yes, know. Yes, yes. There's a Jay Garrick story, Miss Little Hellfire. Okay. Oh, I, I thought you. Okay. I thought you would have picked up some of these for. Uh, there's a bunch of variants for this. I think there's even a Jay Garrick variant for this. Well, I'll have to so, my comic book down does more. this go like? Does that mean there's been 750 issues of the Flash since Jay Garrick? Yes, yes, yes. I believe so because yeah, because when Barry after his he was in a couple issues of Showcase, but then his. Barry's numbering picked up where Jay Garrick's left off back in the day, so yeah. Okay. So it should be, yeah. Okay. Is he looking like JW? Was that a little ship? Maybe. <laughs> he looking a little bit like ship? Maybe. Well, you know. And then, of course, the final story is Wally and the 
Mobius chair with Dr. Manhattan powers. Oh boy. Oh, you know how I feel about that story. I know, but basically he's like I said he's like I keep seeing two timelines. He's like, you know, you know, when I for you know, when I first became Kid Flash and hey, look, then there's that other timeline where there's two Wallies. Hey, what? <laughs> Damn, so Flashy's ruining the universes. Two teams they need to go have a talk with Franklin Richards. That's all I'm saying. Oh, yes, because... You, oh, you mean Franklin Richards. Franklin Richards yeah. is such a B.A. That he could fix the DC timeline. <laughs> but no, I think Flash 750 was one of the... You know, it's, it was one of the better ones that we've had in a while, Flash-wise. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Mean, let's, take, let's talk something we all enjoy. Uh, Black Cat number 10. Yes. Oh yes, that was delightful. Snicked, <laughs> snicked. Oh, that was crazy. Oh god, you mentioned black cat. The dogs went crazy. And those luck powers, those are like some, yeah. some. Uh, yeah. What's her name? Uh, Wanda Maximoff level <laughs> like reality altering. What? Oh, the, the, the oh, just house? like everything that just happens because, like, oh, and here's Deadpool showing up, as luck would have it. <laughs> also, I'd like to know how Wolverine changes costume so fast. Uh, well, I guess, like, before they fight the Frankensteins, he's like, goes from the tattered tuxedo to his full on, you know, brown and yellow outfit. Well, they both change, but you, they both change at that point. Oh, they, you know, I didn't even, did they know? Oh, yeah, I guess she's so. Wearing a dress she's still, then. like, in her color scheme, so that's why I didn't notice it, yeah. I see, but you're right, yeah, they both do a nice costume change. Oh, yeah, it's a, it says 27 up. minutes later, so. Oh, okay. There we go, yep. And they gotta, gotta read all the all the fine print in these comic books. <laughs> I'm getting old, and you gotta man. know what merch they're pushing on you. What's your question, Tristan? <laughs> I need that drop. Because they're all made by the same fa- manufacturer, Tristan. We've been over this before. <laughs> exactly. Tristan, yes. you up on all your fan theories. Come on. Yes. How did you read da- Daddy's... Yep. Uh, I know. <sighs> you know, I really... It's a Hutco, man. They made a lot of money. Uh, just selling weapons to the Empire and the Rebels and the Republic and probably sell stuff to the Nil, too. Uh, also, hey, it was nice to see the Brothers Grimm getting work in this episode. Uh, uh, last time we saw them, a building fell on them, and Otto warned people not to st- not to pay for their medical care. Oh, that's right. Hey, they need employment now. There's no superior Spider-Man. Yeah, man. Well, that's why they're working <laughs> they're, they're on this gig in Madripoor, you know? Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry, Charlie. I know that's still raw. There's no superior Spider-Man. Uh, I know. He'll be back. It's just a... Cl- they just gotta... You know, honestly, it's Project Phoenix, you know? It's just... It's gonna get knocked over. Someone's gonna push a button. Heck, I think... You know, who knows? Anna Marie may, may bring him back. You yeah, know? He always has a copy of his brain hanging around somewhere. There's a there's a copy. He's got like somewhere. six of them. Then you're going to have that episode where Doc Ock meets... You know, First the superior Spider-Man. Spider-Man, yeah. Yes. It'll be fun. Time travel, something. Somehow Doc Ock going to fight the superior Spider-Man at some point. I yeah. you guys have to do. Yes. All right. I guess little, little state's getting anxious, so... Oh, are we cutting this short? Oh, okay. Well, anyway, but yeah, that was fun, and she gets uh, gets the painting. Yes, for reasons, and Wolverine gets all his all his stuff back. And he says, "Oh, nothing's value here." You know, there's like original manuscripts written by Ernest Hemingway. There, you know, that's like, oh, that's that's just a picture from my old pal Ernie. <laughs> it's like, okay. I mean, unless her fences only buy certain things, I don't. know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just saying, as far as, like, valuable stuff, like, like oh, no, this is just, you know, oh, this was just uh, Superman number one. It was signed by the, uh... <laughs> yeah. But it's just an old comic book I like to hang on to, it's you know? Comics number one signed in uh, Siegel and Schuster's blood. Yeah, no, it's all right. <laughs> what, that is, that's valuable to people? People pay money for that? It's... <laughs> then get your, gratu- okay. your gratuitous Deadpool appearance. <laughs> yes, well, you know. Hey, Deadpool needs work too. 
And like, and, and he yeah. was the person who could put on the glasses, get his eyes shut out, and no one would care. <laughs> Although I must say, um, I, I I applaud their uh, uh, they they're not like you know anytime someone guessed the, well they put Wolverine on the covers, but it's like there was Iron Fist was in one issue. They didn't put Iron Fist on the cover. They I didn't know Deadpool was in this issue until it turned because it's Iron Fist. I know, but you would think they would have put Deadpool on the you know they would have you think they would have been like Wolverine and Deadpool in this issue, and they didn't. No, they did not. No, well, they had restraint. Yes. They had some restraint, too, though. Because, honestly, I'm here for Black Cat. <laughs> yeah, it was a good episode. Good issue. I liked it. Yes. I paid money for that book. It was good. It's on the pull list, right? Yeah, it's on my pull list. It's the only, like, spider book is on his pull list. Yeah. Oh, that really is one book that I want to shout out before we go, because it is our friend, Tim Seeley. Okay. It's The Crow Leaf Number 1. It's got art by uh, Elias Cruz Cruz from this IDW. Um, so it's like the crow, but the new guy, and he's a circus freak, and he like loves like after that circus where somebody died, so, like his crow memories of are coming back. So hmm. it's yeah, it's it's the crow. It's in the crow universe, and it's. The first day, she's pretty good. What did you say? The crow leaf? So, yeah. Yeah, L E T H E. Number oh. one. Tim Seeley. <laughs> cool. He's so angsty. I love it. <laughs> I mean, we love his work on Nightwing. I'm sure he's doing a good job on the crow. Uh, it's the 90s. It's all over again. Oh, yeah. I don't know. In particular, my crow. All right. Are we done? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lilith's got to earn her dinner. Anyway. So, yes, send your thoughts. Well, it's the other way around, but whatever. <laughs> your dinner has to earn you? Okay. Anyway, send your, <laughs> exactly. send your thoughts on uh, all this TV, movies, comics. Uh, have questions for Master Doom? Send them in. Capesandlunatics at gmail.com. Call the voicemail. And none of them be, better not be, why aren't these guys canceled? Because I will fight you. <laughs> What the, what do you want to hear Master Doom and Charlie Esser debate? <laughs> Email us, call the voicemail, 614-382-2737. That's 614-38CAPES. And check out uh, all our social media or the U- links to YouTube. Capesandlunatics.org is back up and running. Uh, get all your links everywhere, uh, all in one convenient place. That's Linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E. Slash Capes and Lunatics and support the sponsors Tweaked Audio, Hunt Killer, Pod Life the Book, now in digital and paperback. And again, finance his trip to the Capes and Lunatics episode 150. Use the Amazon link right here in the show notes. When you do, you'll send money to Master Doom and the company to bring you Capes and Lunatics and other fine shows. And like I said, finance his trip. His finance, his uh, internet connection to get him here for episode 150. Ah, Lilith Hellfire. If you nerds want to hang out with me, you can find me on Twitter via at Lilith Hellfire or on Instagram at Lilith Hellfire 69. Party in the front and the back. Save that for Wade's World. (laughs) Scream it! All right, Charlie Esser. Well, if you'd like to write to me in an old-fashioned email way, the way our mothers and fathers once did back in the 90s, you can do so at at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at gmail.com. Of course, follow me on the Twitters as I live-tweet things when I feel like it. At Charlie Esser, that's C-H-A-R-L-I-E-E-S-S-C-R. Look for the two E's in the middle. For quality. Bing. Thank you, my husband. You know, you, as man. a BoJack fan, you have to say back in, in the 90s, I was in a famous TV show. You did as a BoJack TV fan. Show. Yes, back in the 90s, I was in a famous TV show. And they never did determine if he was more horse than a man or more male oh. than a horse. <laughs> But no, oh, he never took his pants off. Enough so. of little help on his dating life. That's it for this week. But for another week, we have been your capes. Ampersand. Lunatic. Man, Charlie Usher brought it down this week. Little Hellfire brought it up. 
Oh, there you go. Got a, got an NU. Again, I'm Egan Steven, yes. So what do you want to tell me, Tristan? <laughs> Oh, that's right. One of the three more weeks. The big episode 150. The big Bill Carrick's birthday kiss from the Eagle Media. Well, that's not good. <laughs>